love you. Jesus, my Lord, I love you. Uh, I love you. Hello and welcome to another segment of the program, Youths with a Mission. This program is brought to you by End Time Harvest Productions. I'm your host, Ambrose Freeman, and uh, as always, we got a great show lineup for you guys today. Um, we're going to be talking to the two leading cast members in the movie, Helpmate, the very anticipated and talked about movie. And um, we're also going to be getting into uh, very interesting issues in our communities, most specifically about the youth. Um, so without further ado, uh, we'd like to say uh, we're very privileged to have you guys in our studio today. We're Thank very you. grateful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, here on my left, we have the very beautiful and elegant Miss City Marie Dane. How are you doing today? I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. And, and yourself? I'm great. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And Nolawu superstar, Mr. Kalu. <laughs> How are you doing with it today, sir? I'm doing very, very well. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, we'd like to begin with Miss City here, um, two time Miss Black America, Beauty Queen, and now an actress. Um, the first question that comes to mind is, um, how did you get into acting? How did I get into acting? Um, actually, I started off when I was, when I was younger. Okay. And I performed in a couple plays. And okay. I think it sort of goes a little bit with pageantry as well. Okay. Because you usually have to have a talent in pageants. Right. And for my talent, I would do different things from singing to dancing, poetry, things of that sort. And so I sort of fell into acting because okay. I enjoyed being in front of the camera right. and playing different roles. Um, in high school or middle school, actually, I had performed a couple roles in a couple plays. Okay. And I enjoyed it then, but to be honest, as an adult, I never saw myself being an actress, wow. per se. And it was something that I did when I was younger and really enjoyed it, but never saw myself pursuing it further until okay. this uh, project came along okay. and this opportunity presented itself. That is very interesting. I mean, because the fact that you were so natural and you were telling me until you became an adult before you got to talk this serious. So that brings me to my next question. Um, with you being a beauty queen, which you so naturally personify, um, you're welcome. Um, what was the transition like for you from the beauty queen se you know, sector to the acting? How was the, how was the transition like for you? Wow, um, I was laughing with the producer and I told them, I think this is much more difficult than pageantry, even though, and I think that's because I, it's something that I'm comfortable. Okay. You know, pageantry, I have, I've developed a comfort zone. I think I'm a veteran in that area. Okay. And so transitioning into acting was a little bit more difficult because mm. I had to really embody the emotion right. of my character and okay. enter into her shoes, even if at that moment I didn't relate to her or right. I had my own issues going on. And so that was sort of a difficult transition for me okay. was how do I sort of um, enter into that character, even if mentally or emotionally I'm not really relating to her at that moment, right, right. how do I force myself to connect with her and really relate in order to become that character and, and portray that and connect with the audience? And so that was, that was the diff most difficult, well, I think. Um, I can definitely tell that uh, some of those traits you exhibited in the pageants, like you know the, uh, when you have to play a certain role to come out on yes. stage, that helped a little bit. Yes. So let's get into uh, the actual movie. Uh, you play uh, the wife of Mr. Kalu here. Um, can you talk to us about a little bit about your character and what, what she's about and compare that to your personal life? Definitely. My character, first I think me and my character do share some commonalities okay. as far as uh, with her personality. She's okay. sort of a strong-willed woman mm -hmm. who has, well, appears to have everything together. Right. She likes to sort of be in control of things. Um, very intelligent, a very okay. beautiful, sort of outgoing woman. Uh, she's a mother, a wife. She has children, two beautiful children in, in the movie. And for the most part, she, she goes to church. She loves God. Um, she tries to do her best to keep everything together and keep her home happy. Right. Um, but on the same token, there's a little bit of pride in her that sort of keeps her from seeking out help when she needs it or or. She, she doesn't want to be perceived as weak or right. not having things together. And so that's sort of her weakness, is the fact that she does have a little bit of that pride hmm. um, and, and, and doesn't really seek out help when she needs that. She doesn't want to appear vulnerable or weak. But we know as humans, we have to allow ourselves to be weak and vulnerable in order to sort of um, progress and, and, and become better individuals. So that's sort of who she is. Um, again, mother, wife, uh, very active in her church, very strong-willed woman. Very loving, caring, but at the same time, 
sort of has that issue of pride a little bit and, and um, for, um, just keeping that image right. that I have everything together and in control. How did you manage, you know, with the, because uh, well, from what we've heard, you know, making movies is a tedious business, you know, the everyday work behind the scenes. Uh, and I, you, co you were coming from a very, you know, similar tradition with the pageant. So was that easier, you know, with the, with the timing, you know, and the scheduling of, you know, the shooting and everything? Was that easier or it was a little bit more difficult? I think that was okay, especially with pageantry, because right. you are on someone else's schedule okay. for, for the most part, even though sometimes um, it can get difficult when you, uh, you're in the motion. But right. for the most part, I think that was, that was not a problem. Wow, that, uh, that's very interesting. Now, I have a very interesting question myself. Um, how would you say, because uh, this is, is this your first project? Your first motion first, picture? Yes. Wow. Well, I guess technically I was in a, in, a, in a movie called Jingle All the Way when I was oh. younger. I was nine. Really? And I was an extra, but this is my first <laughs> time playing an actual role in a okay. movie as first motion picture. How was it like, I mean, you know, playing a role with an already established superstar actor in Mr. Kalu here? You know, how, how was it like on set? Can you, can you, you know, tell all these? On set, wow. Well, let me talk about when I first came, to be honest, I was a little nervous because I said, okay. okay Here's this Nigerian, well-known actor. Yeah. How is, is he going to be arrogant? Is he going to think, you know, just start huh, rubbish? And right. Like that. So I was a little nervous. And then when I first met Kalu at church, um, I was surprised. He was just very laid back, okay. very humble. He's a good guy. Yeah, very good guy. And so that really helped me to sort of calm down a little bit and not be as anxious. And then the thing that I really enjoyed was when I would struggle connecting with my character, mm -hmm. uh, he would sit down and say, okay, let's, let's take a break. And he would talk through, you know, how are you feeling right now? How is this going? Share his experience, listen to mine, which really helped me right. because, um, and the producers also did that as well. And that helped me because it made me feel like, okay, it's okay to have this moment, step back, talk through it. Because for a while I was getting a little anxious, like, oh my right. gosh, they're waiting for me. I have to connect right now. But the fact that he was there to talk me through it really helped. And the, the producers were very understanding. So okay. it's been a really good experience. That is that sounds very awesome. I have to tell you, um, he's like that with everybody. Yes. Just puts people in the comfort zone. That's your area, man. Yes. Um, you know, uh, I read about you a little bit. Um, I know that you're you're a former, you know, beauty queen, 2005 and six. Is that correct? Miss Black USA. Yes. Miss Black USA. Um, tell tell us a little bit about some of the projects you guys undertake, specifically though with you know with Africa with Africa, because I know. You are half Liberian, yes. a West African country. Yes. So tell us a little bit about some of the projects and some of the, uh, the things you guys have going on uh, with, okay. with the continent. Definitely. Well, um, I am currently also a Goodwill Ambassador to okay. the Republic of the Gambia. Oh. And that came about through the pageant. The, that is great. The pageant opened that door and then, well, first and foremost, we know God opens the door. Right. But um, through the pageant, was appointed a Goodwill Ambassador and me and two other um, Goodwill Ambassadors went back actually in 2008 and conducted a mental health wow. um, initiative where we trained some youth in that country and we worked with them. We worked with actually a couple students from my university, University of Maryland in Baltimore, hmm. who were social work students. We brought them there okay. and they sort of led that training. They facilitated the training, educated the youth about mental health awareness, and then we went out in the community and the youth educated the women and the children, hmm. because those were the two groups that were identified as, as sources of a strength for that community. Right. So that was one project that we undertook in 2008. Okay. Also, some of the other Goodwill ambassadors have been educating some of the young women with literacy and things of that sort. Um, currently, I'm actually working on a project with a good brother of mine, Samuka, and his wife, Asiya okay. Kiazulu. They're from Liberia. Okay. And we'll be traveling there with the uh, ch chief of Brooklyn Park Fire Department oh. and, and a team of wonderful people this coming 2012, most likely in the springtime. Okay. And what we'll do there is we're going to work with the fire system, the emergency system, medical team, and we're also going to be re rebuilding a school in one of the local villages. Oh. Oh, wow. and this is going to be a long-term project that we're dedicated to. And so that's just a little insight of some of the projects that um, I've had the honor of working with hmm. in, in Africa. That is very commendable, I have to say. Uh, it's nice to have, you know, especially not only the fact that you have a, you're half Liberian, but the fact that, you know, we have people who take their time to go out, especially what you're talking about. That's something that is unheard of, you know, having a fire chief go over there and establish, you know, the fire system and everything. That is incredible. That is incredible. 
Now, um, I mean, you are very, you are a very educated woman, um, so I've heard, um, and also, this is this being your first project. Is there is there more in the works from you when it comes to acting, or is it going to be like a part time thing Ooh, for you? Big question. Um, I am open okay. to the idea, and the wonderful thing is, um, I've currently been working actually at, at my church as one okay. of the admin assistants, okay. and my pastor, Pastor Mr. Tori, and his wife, Dr. Esther Tori, have been very supportive. And he told me one time when he was praying for me, he said, "Don't you never know what God is going to do. If, right. if He opens another opportunity, then right. we support you. You have our blessings." Uh, but I definitely think it will be something that I do more so part-time, not full-time. Okay. Okay. I don't see myself pursuing it full-time, in all okay. honesty. But definitely projects like this, the Help Mate, and some other projects that I've heard about right. that I really believe in the mission and mm -hmm. feel it's really going to make an impact, then I definitely want to be involved. Because okay. I sort of pride myself in being a servant first. And I believe, you know, we're called to be a servant. And part of this is not just acting, but it's serving the community by being a voice for them. And so I definitely see myself doing more projects, but not full-time. Okay. Well, I have to say, yeah, well, you have our total support, and uh, we really appreciate the fact that you're doing this, um, you know, especially being a Liberian myself. Uh, it really makes us proud. So thank you. thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you so thank very you. much. Thank you. Now, um, Mr. Kalu, uh, Nolawu superstar, an international actor here. Um, the first thing I'd like to get into to, with you, Mr. Kalu, is uh, the fact that uh, you are here and... Um, from what I've heard, this project represents more than just, you know, Nollywood or, you know, Gollywood or all the other woods, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so to put it. Uh, what specifically made you pick this project? Um, I, th I, I picked, I don't know, I mean, usually I go with my heart. I, right. I go with what speaks to me. Um, if uh, a project says the right message, mm -hmm. uh, that is heartfelt, um, like the beautiful city said, right. um, I'm a servant first. I'm a storyteller. Okay. If I'm going to say anything, it has to, it has to reach someone. Right. It has to have a message. I have to be able to walk away saying, I portray, I helped portray something. Right. And uh, you know, when I heard what the subject matter was about AIDS, and more importantly, how um, I was asked to also help with the uh, screenplay. I did the okay. part of the screenplay as well. Oh, okay. And so I didn't want to just put out the AIDS message, just that, but right. to also portray how it affects um, relationships. Yeah, yeah. And it being a Christian theme, not just Christian, but for everybody, you know, the the power of human relationships, the power of forgiveness, the power of working through things, the quality of life, where you decide where life goes, that was the whole message inside it, and that's why I chose it. Wow. Yeah. That's uh, that's what we've heard, and um, you know, is is from what we've seen, the movie uh, it has a lot of depth, you know. So uh, this is a project a lot of people are talking about. Right. Um, but there's something that's very noticeable about this movie. Um, the quality is exceptional. It's, it's like something we've never seen before in the African movie, you know, you right. know, industry and the scene. So is it like a, a bullet point focus that you guys are trying to bring out, like a new generation of, of African movies? Well, um, I think it's it, it's sort of saying uh, we can tell a story, yeah, and it can be told well. Right. I mean, if you know the budget that's on this movie, I mean, you have. Uh, African movies with bigger budgets that have much more quality than it does. Yeah. But it's just um, lots of planning. You know, <clears throat> it's all about planning. It's all about the vision. It's right. all about saying, this is the message we want to, um, you know, portray. This is how we want to okay. say it. And we want it to be visually, I mean, we want to, you know, sort of include people right. in it and not having them like what we were taught like uh -huh. if, if you're if you're watching a drama you have to be able to your audience has to be able to suspend every amount of disbelief uh -huh. you know have to be immersed in it and feel like you're a, a, a part of the drama and that's what we want to, to achieve okay and that's the important thing what what we want to say is if you have a vision uh -huh. once you have the vision set a standard everything will gradually move towards that place no matter what budget you have that's what we want to 
that's what we want to put out there. That is awesome, because a lot of people have been waiting mm -hmm. for stuff like that. And I have to say, uh, you specifically, uh, we've heard, you know, like you said, you're a co-writer on this, on this particular movie. Yeah. You got a blog, and um, you're also trying to get into the actual, you know, making of the movies, like the directing or the producing or whatever. Um, why did you pick that because everybody's doing it, or, you know, it's something that, you know, you specifically want to bring out a specific message? Actually, um, the director who also uh, co-wrote the, uh -huh. the the screenplay with me, um, Kemal B. Raffle, you know, we sort of joked about it because uh -huh. a lot of my contemporaries were jumping into it. Right. I said I was not going to have any. She's even trying to get me into directing. I am I'm, I'm the sort of person who, if I don't see it, I'm not going to right. go into it. That's but, a good um, And um, we have a saying in Nigeria. Uh, de carry last. So I have that sort of mantra. If I'm going to do anything, I must come out the best. Right. I must come out on top. You know. So um, it's it's it was sort of you know I never saw myself this way. I mean I saw myself as a writer, but it's amazing what a vision can do. Okay. Like y you look at it from the business point of view. Okay. Um, you look at things fr from all aspects and. I think that's, in spite of myself, I was I was uh, sort of pushed towards that direction, and I quite enjoy it. I mean, it's it's uh, it's quite. Um, I I I'm coming out of this thing. I want to do a lot more. Okay. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, that that is that is something that um, you know we've always looked out for from from not only the producers and the directors, but from the actors themselves. You know, what next? Right. What's the next important stuff? What's the next stuff to take this to the next level? Um, I read that you actually uh, was was born in England. Yes. Okay. Um, with that being said, you went back. I think when you was like nine years old, or ten years, or something like that. Right. Um, Nollywood is Nigeria. Right. Nollywood is Ghana. Right. Then they got Lollywood now, which is Liberia. Right. And Sierra Leone. I mean, we can go on and on and on. But um, what do you think? The fact that this project is called uh, Global Africa Entertainment. Is this something that you, you 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 know you're okay being identified with, or you 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 know you want to see uh, everything stay the way it is right now? Well, the thing is, um, you know, uh, back in the day, uh -huh. uh, Kwame Nkrumah in, uh -huh. in the '60s, he he came up with this Pan African thing. He wanted the whole continent to speak one language, right. uh, and yep. for some reason, he was taken out. You uh -huh. know. And language is the one thing that unites a country. If you want to yeah. scatter uh, a, a people, yeah. I think God did it back in the day. Right. Yeah, yep. He took their language away, okay. you know? Now, this film, which started in Nigeria, mm -hmm. uh, the movie business, which started in Nigeria, is the voice that we have right. as Africans yeah. to talk about us, written about us. Mm -hmm to promote that to, to our children and promote our culture, show everyone, say these are the people that we are. Okay. This is the language that we have. So that would be stupid, you know, saying, oh, this is Nigeria, this is. Yes, I mean, let's come collectively and right. do stuff. Yes, each person has their own flavor, but yeah. let's see ourselves as one. And that the, the picture business is the one voice that we have to say who we are. Wow, I can tell you that what you just said is gonna go a long way. A lot of people are watching this. I hope so. Yeah, it is. Um, let's get into this movie a little bit. Um, what is your What is your character, and why Why did you specifically pick this role? Actually, um, on the face of it, mm -hmm. it's just one of those roles. Okay. Right, just on one the of face. Those roles. On the face of it, okay. like just one of those roles. Oh, husband of the, you know, gets married, uh, cheats on his wife, and it's simple. Okay. But it's like. Uh, Oh, what's this, this body of water where it, it's smooth as glass on the mm -hmm, top mm -hmm. and the undercurrents are very, very powerful. Right, right. That's what this is like, okay. you know. <laughs> the, the, it's just smooth as glass on the top, but underneath it's, it has lots of emotions and yeah. conflicts of the humor. So where do your loyalties lie? Um, I can't give away too much about mm -hmm. the story, okay. but there's even an, an even greater conflict um, you know, the, the, the name says it all. Yeah. It's the helpmate. So helpmate. who actually is the helpmate to, mm -hmm. this, to this man? Because both women, sort of in their own way, have their rights to him. 
right. if you look at it. Yeah. And they have their own conflict. And then she has, the, the wife has her own conflicts with her husband. And the husband has her own conflicts with himself. And right. the wife as well has her own. So there are so many intimate conflicts within yeah. one huge conflict in it. These are the powerful undercurrents that run in it. Wow. I saw it, I saw it, uh, my copy saw it as well, and we said, no, we can't let this go. We have to sit on this and make sure, you know, something comes out of it. Wow, that is, that is awesome. And uh, we also like the production group because uh, we heard they, uh, they set themselves apart, you know, from the rest of them, and uh, they're striving to do good things. Um, with that being said, I have to say, all the things you guys have said is very commendable. Right. Um, we just like to know from you, the viewers would like to know, what are some of the next projects you would like to undertake? What's next for Mr. Kalu? Well, like I said before, I mean, I'm, I'm a writer I'm, and I'm an okay. actor. And um, my experience here, like I said before, um, you know, propels me towards greater things, like especially on social issues. And I'm currently working with uh, Lamin, the okay. uh, producer we're talking about, and in camera about documentaries. That's another okay. passion I want to go into. Documentaries? Lots of documentaries, okay. especially you know, when you talk about, we, we, like Africans, we don't really have a voice per se. Yeah, know? yeah, you can say that. A voice per se about who we are. So those, those, are, those are the angles I want to go into, like lots of documentary. You can never run out of things to talk about. You can yeah. never, ever. So I think in the immediate term, that's what I'm looking at. Okay. Um, I, I can't wait. Well, you know, we're so, always waiting. Whatever you come up with, uh, you're one of those actors, uh, you know, we'll look out for. So, Ms. Silly, uh, tell us exactly uh, why should audience go and watch this movie when it comes out? Oh, why should they? I, I'm curious to know why not. I definitely think that the audience, it's a, it's a movie that you need to see. Okay. And the exciting part is, as Kali mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. is it's a global African sort of connection. Okay. And all of us giving, giving a voice to our community. And um, the biggest thing, I think, too, is supporting a cause. Right. Um, many people don't know, but we're actually partnering with a nonprofit organization called Health, I mean, Light, okay. Health and, and, and Wellness. Okay. It's located in Baltimore, in Baltimore, Maryland. And part of the proceeds for this movie and also some of our T-shirt campaigns and things okay. that we'll be doing will go towards supporting this organization, and which ultimately is supporting people in our community who are living with, who are impacted with HIV and AIDS from children to families, mothers, fathers, and educating them, educating the community. And so that's definitely another reason to go out and see this movie is because you're supporting a greater cause, not just the movie itself, but furthering the education on HIV and AIDS and actually touching the lives of those who are actually impacted and living with it. So that's, I think, definitely motivation in itself to go out and support and see this movie. This and goes we're in it. <laughs> definitely, obviously. <laughs> I mean, this goes beyond motion picture. I'm going to have as much people as I can to see this project. Thank um, you. It's going to be awesome. So, Ms. City, uh, what was it like, you know, on set working with these, you know, cast and crew? What's, what, what experience uh, uh, did you guys have? We never had any fun. They just worked oh, us like boy. slaves and... No, I'm just teasing. Okay. It was a lot of fun, actually. Um, I absolutely loved our director, Cam, and we have Lamine, Victor. Okay. And Lamine's wife, Nornor, I mean, she would cook for us pepper soup, <laughs> put some chicken feet in it. I mean, we were eating good. Chicken feet, huh? Cassava leaf, all of that. <laughs> and so we, we ate good, we laughed, we joked a lot in okay. between, even though we had a lot of serious moments for, okay. the, for the part. Right. But I love it. After cameras were off, it was just like we were one big family. Right. Cracking jokes on each other, just laid back, having fun, and it was it was really it was it was really good. We, that's we awesome. had a lot of fun. I mean, that's what a it's lot about. Of fun. That's and what we're it's all about. All silly and, and crazy. <laughs> in our own way, so that's what it's about, it. man. I mean, you guys go in there, have fun, you know, make it feel real. That's how movies come out looking so real. Kyla, can you describe this movie in four words quickly? Okay, that was a setup because <laughs> the director knows I talk a lot. Yeah. I have to talk. Just four. Very safe words. Mm -hmm. It's very, very good. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good enough. That's very good enough. Uh, but then, well, well, why then? Why didn't we go and see this movie though? I mean, you said it's very good enough, but you know, what's what, what's some of the other reasons you would like people to know? Actually. Um, I'm a sucker for stories. Okay. I, I love stories. And one thing I can say is what I want, the reason I wrote this movie mm -hmm. and what I want and what is, is going to happen is 
there are going to be arguments. Right. I love fights. Controversies. Arguments, controversies out of this movie. From who is supposed to be the man's woman, mm -hmm. who has the right, that's what's going to happen. Jeez. Yeah, if I get that, that's, that would be an absolute plus. <laughs> I can't wait, man. I can't wait, I'm telling you. Well, that's you know, we were always waiting, whatever you come up with, uh, you're one of those actors, uh, you know, we'll look out for. You have you know, have great head on your shoulders, so to speak. Right. Um, and um, it is always nice to have you guys around uh, for coming to our studio, to our program. Thank so thank you. thank you guys very much. And um, this is a movie, I think, when it comes out, it's going to cause a lot of buzz, like it's doing right now. Right. And it's going to do great things. So. Uh, we'll love to have you guys back sometime on another on another program. So it will be our pleasure. Thank you so much, Mr. Kalu. Really thank appreciate you. this. Thank and uh, you very much, Miss Silly. Thank you very much. I love you, Jesus, my Lord. I love you. Uh, I love you. Hello once again, this is uh, the program, uh, Youth with a Mission, brought to you by uh, End Time Harvest Productions. And uh, we have one of the ladies in the film with us today, Ms. Faith Uday. She has a very interesting character she plays in this movie. Uh, welcome to the program, Ms. Faith. Well, thank you. How are you? I'm very good, and you're very welcome. Uh, we are happy to have you here today. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, the first thing that comes to mind is I heard you're an artist, a musical artist. I am. I am a rapper and okay. singer. I know most people look at me and they're like, what, you rap? Like, yeah, <laughs> they have this image of what a rapper is supposed to be, but yeah. I've been doing it for a while now. I've been doing it for about what, five years now. Oh. Yeah, wow. started right, out of, right after college and I was just like, you know what, I can do this. And so wow. just been going at it for a while. I've been traveling around regionally, been okay. out to LA and New York. Um, and it's just been a blessing. It's a, it's a blessing just looking at the growth yes. of the whole journey and stuff. Definitely. Do you, do you kind of sing a little bit too with that? I do. I do. Oh. I do rock. I love rock. rock. I do. I love rock <laughs> music, you know? And I love being that non stereotypical right. female front right. lead. You don't see a black girl doing rock, especially rapping over rock. Yeah. So it's been a lot of fun to really break some barriers and really okay. challenge people's ideology of music. Exactly. Um, from, from, with that being said, um, how did you get into acting, you know, with the whole music thing? How did you get into that? Okay, so I'm preparing, I was preparing about two years ago to mm -hmm. get back, you know, because I have an upcoming album okay. or a mixtape coming out in April. Okay. And so I was preparing to get back on stage. I love my live performances, so I'm big about the band, I'm big okay. about the dancers, I'm big about, you know, the vocalists and yeah. really driving home. Um, that stage presence, because that's really where you connect with the individuals. Right. Um, and so what happened was I decided that why not take some acting classes okay. and sort of beef up my stage presence. Uh -huh. So I was just going to do it as a passing hobby, and okay. it ended up I ended up falling in love with acting, actually. So it's going to be two years in January in the acting. Um, did, you, um, did you audition for, these, for this specific uh, uh, movie, or...? that you get connected through your music that you were doing? Um, I got connected through C-Day. Through C-Day, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, she called me. It was so random. I'm sitting in church, right. and I get this text message like, yeah, I have a premiere. You should come on out. <laughs> I'm like, who is this? You know, like, who is texting me in the middle of the church? You know, because okay. most people know that I'm, I'm serious. On that Sunday morning, I'm locked out, you know. So she texts me, and so... All of a sudden, I decided to go. I was like, sure, let, let me call this person. It ended up being C-Day. Um, came, saw her premiere, or they were promoting the film, and then they had auditions okay. or uh, to sign up for auditions. So, okay. yeah, I just submitted it. I was like, oh, never hurt. Wow. And I ended up getting a part, so it was cool. Well, congratulations. Thank on you. That. Uh, let's get into this movie a little bit. Um, you play a, a very interesting character. Mm -hmm. um, how did you prepare, you know, how was, how was the preparation for that? Because the character is so, so intricate that um, how would you, you know, contrast it to your real life? Um, in reality, I've never been a mistress. I'm okay. never planning on being a mistress. So right. It was kind of hard for me to be like, oh. But it was fun because that's the one thing that I love about acting because you get to play roles that you never play in real life. Right. Um, so one of the ways that I actually got to prep for this mm -hmm. was my friend had a theater stage 
show that she invited me to. Oh, okay. And it, she was playing the role of a mistress. And so I got okay. to watch her firsthand right. and watch her prep. And she gave me a lot of advice as to just understanding the character, coming from the point of yeah. view of the character, and understanding the dynamics of the whole situation. Okay. And so after just, you know, practicing with my friend, getting some tips there, really getting to know right. Bertha, you know, and yeah. taking her and in. That's and that's the name of the character, Yes, okay. exactly. And what would I do if I was in her situation? So it has a lot of emotion, and that's why I really like the movie, okay. is because you express, you get to see the other woman not just as the bad mistress. Right. She has her emotions, she has her range of um, situations that she has to go through and she okay. has to sort through. And so that's what I liked about it. It was a complex yet simple story. So the fact that City, who is your personal friend, mm -hmm. who recommended you to this movie, did it help with your comfort lever for her to be one of the actual actors in the movie? Yeah, it was fun yelling at CD. <laughs> we <laughs> don't get to argue, you know, we're cool. And okay. so it was fun being like, yeah, I hate you. <laughs> um, so it was good, it was good. I think it was a good thing okay. for both of us because we knew we were coming out of love. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, will, will this be your first motion picture? No. Oh. No, it's not. It's my first international Nigerian or I would say African film, which is awesome okay. because I've been wanting to break into that market. Okay. Um, but no, I've been blessed to have a lot of short films. I did four feature films this summer. Okay. So it was, it's good that the acting is slowly picking up. Okay. Um, yeah, I played roles of a cop to detective. Oh. Yeah, too. We had a, a karate movie, which is mm -hmm. Emma's Revenge, that's coming out. <laughs> and so I got, it's sort of like Kill Bill meets uh, Charlie's Angels, so we had to train for like nine months Filipino martial arts. Wow. So it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Wow. Yeah. Now, um, speaking of that, uh, is this something now that you want to pursue, you know, on a, on a, on a full-time or a part-time basis, the fact that you got an album or a mixtape coming out? I know, right? You tell me. You tell me. I'm just kidding. I mean, <laughs> I mean I'm, I, I'm, you, you're, you're, you're very busy right now. so uh, it, It's one of those things that you just keep on sowing your seeds right. and see wherever God takes them, honestly. Like, I love both of them. I think it, I just love being creative, and they give me that opportunity to be creative in different yeah. venues. So it's very similar but very different. So I love music. I love acting. And wherever it takes me, it's wherever it takes me. That's a good motto. Mm -hmm. For the sake of the audience, um, can you tell us some of the names of the previous you know, projects you've worked on? Yeah, um, Emma's Revenge. I did, uh, well, again, it was Kill Bill meets Charlie's Angels. Then I did Nephilim, okay. um, where we get killed off by giants. Um, I've done Fear Not, where I got to be a detective. Okay. Um, so it was interesting characters, okay. you know. So there's lots of other short films and feature films, so check it out. Well, that sounds really great. Uh, you've played a lot of interesting roles, though. I mean, you know, not the very typical, you know, female role. That's very great. See, that's the fact that I you're love. exploring other avenues. So I think that's, that's because awesome. I'm that type of person who will bulldoze people. Mm -hmm. Yep. So <laughs> typically, some of my parts were meant for males. Okay. Yep. So. All right. So Faith, um, what would you say is the reason why people should go and watch this movie? Help me. It's a complex yet simple story about human beings, honestly, and their struggle with AIDS and relationships. And I think it just encompasses just the natural, raw emotions of what individuals go through in a situation like that. All right. Well, uh, we'd like to thank you guys very much. Oh, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. And um, we appreciate it. We uh, wish you luck in the film success, and uh, we'd like to have you again sometime. Well, thank you so much. So thank you very much. Welcome to another segment of this program, Youth with a Mission. This program is brought to you by End Time Harvest Productions. I'm your host, Ambrose Freeman, and uh, we have with us today the executive producer of End Time Harvest, actually, Mr. Lamine. We will be uh, talking to him today a little bit about his production group and uh, some of the new and you know things that they are doing in the community and some of the ways in which they uh, are striving to improve the industry with the movie. Um, so. 
thank you very much for being on our show and welcome. Um, now, um, end time harvest is actually fairly new, but causing a lot of buzz around the area. What can you tell us about, you know, your program or your your company and uh, how you guys came about this whole thing? Well, um, end time harvest started actually in 2009 um, by a group of folks, um, and we were brainstorming on how to get our messages out to our folks. Um, most of us birth in the church, and there are a lot of things that um, we know our youth and our community um, have been going through or is lacking. And so we, we started talking about issues, we started brainstorming about, about issues. And one of the ways that we concluded that would be the best way or best means of sending our message out there to folks is through um, visual, through movies, through television programs and, and things like that. So that's where it all came about. Wow, that sounds great. So it sounds to me like kind of like um, it's also a community thing where you guys incorporate the churches, which is very good. Um, with that being said, um, is this something that you guys want to take further or you want to keep, you know, restrict the, to this particular area with the use and um, bringing out movies and, and, you know, burping, you know, different careers? Or is this something you guys want to do on a global basis, you know, as time goes by? Well, um, the production company, it's a non-profit, but it's global. And um, we have the part of the production company that is movies and we have the other one that is music. Um, and so what we are doing is we are collaborating with a lot of other huge production company. Okay. And then most of our project that we'll do, we will not do it alone, we'll do it um, in collaboration with, with big um, production companies, companies that have had experience in, okay. in, um, in most of the movies industry or uh, the music industry. And as I said before, this is a movement. It's not just, um, it's not just an organization, but it's a movement. And there are two morals that we are trying to portray. Um, and those morals are, are mostly geared towards young adults, young youth, teenagers, and then also for marriage couples, people in their home. Also, it's also applied to everyone, but, but the way it's geared towards, or we're more looking at um, these two groups. Okay, that sounds so good. Um, for the viewers to understand, are there any projects that you guys have out already that you guys are working on currently that you would like to talk about? Well, we have um, two projects that we are completing right now, and one of them is called um, Helpmate, which uh, the bus is already out, and a lot of folks um, want to see Helpmate, and the other one is called Boys Cry. Helpmate is about a marriage couple, and then Boys Cry is about, um, it's about the youth, um, for, teenage, uh, for youth actually, not teenagers, um, and which we'll elaborate on that later. Okay. Um, most specifically with the helpmate, uh, we've heard a lot of, you know, exactly their buzz about this movie in the community and around, you know, the internet and, every, and stuff like that. Um, the quality of the movie seems to be so different from the regular, you know, African productions, you know, movies that are out nowadays. Is there like a bullet point, you know, focus that you guys are pointing out to like bring out the African movies in a new different light or is it just with the whole production, the whole team, the professionalism? You know, can you can you elaborate on that? Because the movie is just, um, it is it is it is really uh, it's different. It really is different. Well, one thing, like I s mentioned earlier, uh, most of our projects will be collaboration, meaning that we will um, look out there in the market, look out there in the community, and collaborate and try to bring the best out of our product. Um, one thing, uh, our base, as I said, our base is the church. Um, we, most of the movies will do either gospel movies or there will be movies that have moral attributes, something that our kids can learn from, something that our mothers and fathers can, can learn from, something that someone can take something out of it. So that's why I call this a movement. So we are purposeful. We are purposeful. We want to reach homes. We want to communicate our messages. So, and in order for us to do that, we, we are trying not to do same old, same old. Um, it's a tedious process because um, we, we do a lot of reshoot, a lot of, it's, it's just tiring. But that's the reason why we, we, we brainstorm and try to come up with the best quality, best sound, so that at least when, when we're giving people um, the product, they can know that, well, I'm not only taking a message from it, but it's, it, it was done well. Wow, that, uh, that's very commendable. Um, you guys have been out fairly new, two years, um, a little bit more working in the background, but 
I mean, the buzz about you guys is so huge that people want to know who's actually behind all of this. And you've been executive producer of this whole uh, process. Um, what can you tell the people about you and how you came about this from the beginning, from the outset? Well, my life has been a struggle by itself. And um, at a point in my life, um, I got to a point where I decided my life will be based on things that are purposeful. Um, I went through a lot of challenges. I went through uh, a time in my life that I think God wanted me to rethink um, the things that I was doing, um, the businesses and things that I was involved in. So I went through that episode and, and there was a lot of lessons learned and there were a lot of things that God wanted to teach me. And I humbly learned those lessons and I think that he progresses me from that point to a purposeful work and saying that I know you want to do this and I know you want to do that but this is what I have for you. This is this is the route that I want to take you folks. So we are a group of people, Very most of us are young. We have um, a lot of backing from, from you know, churches and, and, and very strong people out there um, that, that knows the vision and that are praying with the vision. Um, and so as time goes by, we'll keep um, educating our community, ed ed educating um, people out there about what we do and the need for us to get support. Um, support in the sense that we want people to, to um, 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 rally around us and um, see what we're doing and, um, and try to promote what we're doing. You guys have a great base. Um, it is a spiritual one. It comes from a positive area. So that is also something that uh, we really admire in the community. And I also learned that you guys just don't pick anyone when it comes to your team, not only the actors, but, you know, the management, you know, the, the, the project owners and everything. Um, but most recently, you, uh, you, you've you been working with a very, uh, you know, notable superstar Nollywood actor. How did you, um, how did you get him on board? I mean, that, that's something people like to know. Um, well, it, it's been a progression. We, uh, we contacted a um, um, few actors, main stars, and then uh, um, before we contacted them, we went through 13 weeks of checking their background, checking their work, the work that they have done, how in-depth they are, um, the quality of work they produce, what kinds of work they're interested in. And based on that, we selected few of the big star. And then um, when we selected few of them, and then we, we sent them messages and saying that we're working on a project, um, we don't have you know, a lot of money, we're a nonprofit, but this is what we're working on, and these are the projects. And so we sent it out there, and uh, Kalu was one of them. And one thing about his work that impresses us, because he doesn't do any work. Um, he's pretty thorough, and then he, uh, he picks his project pretty, um, uh, pretty, pretty, he's pretty detailed. And so um, he was interested, and so um, uh, um, he's part of the project. And like I said, I'll give you some more details. And then um, also uh, Sidi Maridine. She's a Liberian that is not known in the community. Um, she is the former Miss 2005-2006 Miss Black USA. So she has some high profile. And uh, it took us a while to, to, to conclude um, on, on casting. That is one of the most challenging um, um, thing about what we're doing is the casting. Because you have hundreds of people. How yeah. do you pick, um, how do you pick uh, the people that actually uh, um, send the message out there? So it's not an easy thing. It's, it's not an easy thing. But I think God has prepared most of us with our life experiences, with even like our business background and the things that we've gone through. So it's like God was preparing many of us for, for, for this task. The fact that you guys go beyond and above, you know, the regular, you know, the regular, you know, mode of, you know, pick, picking your actors and picking your people for your project, uh, it is something that speaks highly of, you know, what you think about the industry. I read once uh, in an interview Kalu did, um, he talked about, he so intelligently put, about the state of the African movie you know, industry, not only Nollywood or Gollywood, but just the entire industry. And he, he said something about, um, you know, one of the reasons why you know, Africa is kind of like a little bit back is because um, producers and, 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 you know, and directors have what we call in Africa the, uh, you know, the quick profit syndrome. Um, is that something you guys are very aware of that when you are creating these movies and these projects that it's not about you know how quick you can get out the, you know a, a, a product but you know the quality not the quantity is that something you guys are you know it's, it's like a focus point for you guys yeah um, as I said earlier our focus point first is the message um, we are sending thorough messages out there 
and we want those messages to be able to get in homes and change lives. So the base is first the message. Um, secondly, as you have said, um, most of what we'll do, most of the pro proceed will benefit churches, will benefit um, and not other nonprofit organizations. So we're not in this just for ourselves, we're in this as a communal program. Um, and so we, we've looked at the market. Um, as Africans, we, we, we're not only Africans. Sometimes we, we get complacent because people are buying the product. So we just want to get it out there as fast as possible. And so we keep giving people the same standard years after years, and we're not improving. We're not making an effort to sit back, look at our, our product and say, what do we need to do to improve? So what we have done is we, we, we question ourselves. How, why would people out there want to look at our production as opposed to you know, the market out there? So, and one of the things that, that we, we boiled down to was the message. And the second one was the quality. And, and the third one was the caliber of the people that we use in our, our production. So our production, as we said, it is meant not only for the librarian community, um, not only for the Sierra Leonean community, not only for uh, the Somalian, but it's a global reach. But in as much as our backgrounds are from Sierra Leone and Liberia and um, from West Africa, but we also want that global reach to our product. We want everyone to be able to, um, to, be able to watch um, what we produce. That is wonderful, I have to say. Um, aspiring actors who are watching this interview right now, you know, and admiring your, your, your company, would like to say, you know, I'd like to work with these guys. Can you, have, can you tell them something about if you guys ever have like an open edition or, you know, uh, or a closed one where you can like publicize and let people know so they can come and audition for you guys and show their talents? Yes, we do have um, ongoing auditions um, as we progress. Um, our, our productions are thorough, so we take our time in picking our cast. We take our time in even producing and shooting. Everything we do takes time um, because we want to make sure that what we're bringing out to folks um, is good and, and, and they're proud of what we're doing and then they will support us more. Um, so we, we will be having ongoing auditions and we want the public to stay tuned um, and then as we have auditions we'll put flies out there, posters, we'll, we'll, we'll transfer, we'll go on radio station and transfer the message out there. So we want to encourage everybody when we're doing our auditions for people to show up um, and, um, and give it a try. We'd like to thank you very much for being on the show today, and um, thanks for letting the audience and, 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 and the viewers know exactly what you guys are about, what you plan on doing in the future, and um, you know, and you know the work that you guys have been carrying out. So, thank you very much, Mr. Lamy, and we uh, would like to be talking to you sometime again. Thank you. Thank you very well. I love you. Jesus, my Lord, I love you. Uh, I love you. Jesus, my Lord, I love you. I love you.